Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to today's Caffeine for the Soul. And today I wanted to share a story that I shared recently in one of my blogs, but I wanted to kind of come at it from a slightly different angle and, and explore the fundamental question of are some things meant to be, which would also imply that some things are possibly not meant to be. And the story I wanted to share is a story that just happened as I'm recording this, where one week ago we moved into a house that we first saw and fell in love with 17 years ago. So my wife and I moved to America from London and we had lived in a lot of different places in London and we finally kind of settled down into a place about 19 years ago after we moved here. And then we just kind of like looking at open houses. So in 2002, we looked at an open house and just fell in love with this place. We called it the TARDIS because from the outside, all you can see is a, a front door, a couple of windows, and a garage. But you then go down and down and down, and it, it's just surprisingly huge for, for what it looks like from the outside and really beautiful and just laid out the way we liked it. And, you know, they say good bones. It had good bones. And it, it made such an impression on us that even though there was no way we could buy it back then, we, we said to each other, well, if that place ever comes back on the market one day, you know, we want to buy it. And for the next 17 years or so, every now and again, we would, it was near enough to where we lived that we didn't often drive by it, but we, we'd kind of just kind of look to see if there was a for sale sign in the neighborhood. And if there was a new open house, we'd kind of drive over wondering if it was going to be that house. And in all honesty, I was kind of glad that it didn't come on the market because I couldn't have afforded it <laughs> for a long time. And then we had decided next year, and this story is going somewhere because I, 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 am, I am getting to a point. Early, earlier this year, we, we decided we were going to move next year somewhere, maybe not even in, in L.A. anymore, because our, our youngest is going to graduate high school, go off to, off to university, and it won't matter so much where we live. And then I was away on work, and my wife texted me and said, hey, it's for sale. And I knew what she meant. I knew, I knew exactly what she meant. I was like, oh, my God, what's the price? And the price was still too much. But, but you know, we thought, oh, okay, it would be kind of worth maybe taking a look at. And we looked at it and we thought, wow, this is still our dream house. It's not, it was 17 years older and <laughs> in need of work, but, but still good bones. And we, we, we sort of sat with it and went, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not worth it. Then a couple weeks later, she texts me and says, hey, they've just dropped the price. And they dropped it into our range. Would we be nuts not to at least make an offer? And so we made an offer, and they accepted the offer. And we thought, oh, my gosh, it's meant to be. But then a couple of things went wrong. We had trouble selling our house. So, oh, maybe it's not meant to be. But then something good would happen. We go, oh, it's meant to be. And then something bad would happen. Oh, maybe it's not meant to be. And this literally carried on until last week, where... On Monday, it was meant to be because everything was going through. On Tuesday, it wasn't meant to be because one big thing almost fell through. Wednesday, it was meant to be, so we booked the movers. Thursday, it was still meant to be, and Friday, we moved. And the amazing thing about the experience was, while on the one hand, I'm kind of in, in awe of the fact that 17 years after seeing it, and without doing anything about it in the meantime, we, we actually are living in this place that we'd, we'd said, wow, if that ever comes back on the market. But also how stressful it was wondering if something was meant to be. Because <laughs> you'd think that would take the pressure off. Well, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And if it's not, it's not. So we don't have to worry about it. But boy, did we find ways to worry about it. So here, here are some of the theories that I've heard over the years that, that I've kind of thought might be true over the years about how things happen in the world. And, and the first, he, he, the sort of famous version of it, I think it's Napoleon Hill, who said, whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe, it can achieve. And so the idea there is that if, if you believe in it enough, if you believe in yourself enough, then you can make things happen. Now, our story doesn't mean that's not true, but it's also not a great argument for it being true. Because 
if you'd asked us probably every third day whether we believed it would happen, the answer would have changed. So we, we didn't believe in it. We didn't believe in ourselves. We just kind of thought it'd be cool and kept moving. So that would sort of suggest that maybe one of the other really popular theories about how things happen in the world is true, which is if it's to be, it's up to me. That's the sort of empowerment model that, you know, you go out there and it, it, I think it was Hannibal in the Punic Wars thousands of years ago who said, you know, we will either find a way or make one. And, and there's that sort of idea that it, it, it's up to you. And if it happens, it's because of you. And if it doesn't happen, it's because of you. And that doesn't really kind of follow because there were so many things beyond our control for better and for worse that happened around this, starting with the people who owned it before us deciding to put it on the market. It wasn't like we approached them. That it, it really didn't feel like it was up to us other than doing what was in front of us to do. If there was paperwork to read through and sign, we would read through and sign it. If, if there was money to pay, we, we paid the money. If there was a problem, and there were a lot of problems, then we'd sit with it until an idea came and we'd, we'd do what occurred to us to do. So we did take plenty of action. But it didn't feel like we made it happen. And, and, and then so that suggests maybe the flip of it is true. Well, God wanted us to have the house. The universe wanted us to have the house. It was fate that we had the house. And I love this idea. I would like this one to be true. I, I love in the Rubiyat of Omar Khayyam, there's a, a, a famous verse, at least in the uh, Edward Fitzgerald translation. The moving finger writes, and having writ moves on, nor all thy piety nor wit shall lure it back to cancel half a line, nor all thy tears wash out a word of it. And I think part of the reason why I like the idea of fate is it, it lets me off the hook. <laughs> like, it's not my fault, it was fate. You know, it's not my fault. You know, if it happens, it's, it's you know, it, it's, it's great. But if it doesn't happen, oh, it's, well, it's not, it's not my bad. Here's the thing. I do find comfort in the idea, and it definitely does seem to me at times like, like there's an element of fate, like, like some things are just meant to be. I don't know if you ever saw the movie Apocalypse Now, but there's a great scene where Robert Duvall is standing and there's bombs going on all around him and he's just standing there and going, I love the smell of napalm in the morning. And it, he's completely, he doesn't even flinch. And it's because somebody asks him about it and it's just his philosophy is, look, my, you know, it's already done. You know, the day I'm going to die is, is, is already written, so there's nothing I can do about it, so there's nothing to worry about. It is a very comforting idea. I just don't know if it's true. And, and so... Here's what it looks like to me. And, and the first thing is, there's something about sincere desire and intention. Like, there is something about the fact that Nina and I both thought it would be really cool if we lived in this house. It was sincere. It wasn't manufactured. We didn't have to motivate ourselves. We didn't have to remind ourselves. We didn't have to come up with lists of reasons why it would be great. We just thought it would be really cool. And there's something about that kind of simple desire, simple intention, that it almost seems like the universe rearranges itself to make happen. Now, again, not that you can make it happen with your intention. It's just that somehow your desires and intentions at the deepest level seem to be tied in with the universes, seem to be tied in with the unfolding. Now, another thing that was really clear through this whole process is that, is that neediness is a dream killer. And, and by neediness, it, it's, that, it's that moment where it goes from, wouldn't it be cool, to, I've got to have this or. And you can feel it in yourself. You can feel the difference between, oh, that'd be cool, and, oh, oh, because you play tight. When, when, when it starts to be a need, you play tight. You're not at your best. You're not thinking clearly. You're, you're playing not to lose instead of playing to, to play. And, and during the process, there was one point where I just was totally freaked out. And, and my coach said to me, you know, look, you got you to gotta ask yourself. You got to get really quiet. And you got to ask yourself, do you, do you really need this? Because you're acting like you do. And I, that night I took my dogs up uh, and, and we walked by the, the outside of the TARDIS. And 
And I just sat there for probably five minutes. And I just got really clear, yeah, no, I don't need it, but boy, it'd be cool. I'd really love it. And, and from that moment forward, just everything was kind of lighter. It, it was, you know, it, yeah, it'd be super cool if it happened, and it was, it was no big deal if it didn't. And then the last thing is just to do what's in front of you to do. At every point during the process, there was just a next step. There was just an opportunity to keep our feet moving. And we kept our feet moving, and as it happened, we wound up in a new home. So was it meant to be? Maybe. But here's, here's what seems to me to be unquestionably true. The only way we can really know if something is meant to be is that it is. Have fun, learn heaps. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you soon. 